So if you're single, please, I beg you on my knees, don't marry a fool. Don't marry a guy because he has money, he's handsome, he's tall, he's this. Haven't you seen tall men because short as they get fat? <laughs> I'm not joking. Haven't you seen the coolest guy before? He had a lot of hair. Soon enough, he's what? He's bald. You feed him well enough, his tummy goes out. So, so that tells you it's not about the physical man. It's about the content of the man, the character and the strength of that man. The fear of God in that man is ability to f help you be what God has called you to be. His ability to hear God and yield to God in nurturing you to be the best of yourself. And sometimes what you see now is not what the future holds. So some guys look like they're rich now. Five years down the line, ten years down the line, what do you know? Some guys look that they have nothing now. Or they're simple. They're about to just offer you a simple life. And everybody tells you you're insane. And that's the one that turns out great. God has a lot of surprises along the path of our life. And because we can't see that much, we need to walk closely with God through the ministries of our life. What has God called you to be? What must you do? How have you empowered and equipped yourself? How are you fighting and standing for that which you know is the call of God on your life? I didn't know too much. Even as a young Muslim girl. But I knew I wanted to make something of my life. I knew certain things that I sensed. And at the right time, God made sure that he took me over so that I would be able to live the life he had prepared for me. But even before then, I had some small, small sense that I applied. So somebody likes me, wants to marry me. He's a soldier. I don't want to be no soldier's wife. <laughs> Not because there's anything wrong with him, but I wanted to have a life. I wanted a family that would be together, and I wanted to have a full career. And as, as far as I understood it then, they're always moving from one place to the other. Then, at another stage, there was a diplomatic guy, and I thought, I'm no diplomat's wife. Why? Most times, the wives of the diplomats don't work. They follow their husbands to the different stations. They do some work to keep busy in, when they're in those countries, but they can't have a full career. And I knew I wanted to make something of my life. I didn't really know what it was. But I sensed in my life in, that I wanted to make something of my life. So I took hard decisions. As a young girl, I said, no, I'm not doing that. Then somebody had a fancy idea that since I was a Muslim girl, and there was somebody who loved me and had plenty of money and everything, I would make somebody's second wife. And I thought, hey, me. I'm nobody's second wife. Somewhere, there's my own husband. And everybody told me, you know, you're too smart and ambitious as a young woman. Most young men can't cope with you. You're going to end up marrying an older person. I, said, I don't care. If that's the older person that is called to me, as long as he has the capacity to help me to be me. But God in his wisdom, as I stood, I met the Lord. As I met the Lord, I met my husband months before I met the Lord. Same year. I met my husband in January. I became a Christian months to my wedding. It's true. And in that year, by the end of that year, I gave my life. I, I got married. What I'm saying is this. It looks like, let me just marry this guy. He say key success factor in your life. Your ability to be, your spouse is key. So if you're single, be deliberate about the considerations that lead to that decision. It's not an emotional decision. It's a practical decision based on your prayers, your discernment, 
and your ability to look at the situation and t- make a call. Women love men very easily. A man that is good to you every day, you love him. And the one you think you're madly in love with that beats you up every day, you soon hate him. Choose your path. Invest in yourself.